Hey yo guys, what's happening? Check it out. It's your boy Rain TJ back again with another reaction video. But uh, like I always promised, the closer we get to being monetized, I'm trying to get more into the art main focus. So today we're looking at the NBA young boy drawing, but we're looking at it live and a lot closer. As you can see, it's right here in front of you. Um, and we're going over this uh, re uh, this cuff boys, right? So first of all, if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe, drop a like. Show some support. It's not my video, not my content. Just a quick reaction while we draw. Uh, let's get straight into it. And um, I was about to say NLE Chopper, but YNW Melly, uh, state attorney lied about detective on the stand. Let's see what it says. A month ago, ASA Michelle Boutros took the stand and exposed lead detective Mark Moretti for soliciting lies and conducting Melly's mom's search warrant for her phone. Boutros also stated she would never work with Mark Moretti again mm. because of the way he took the phone and how he conducted the search warrant. I leave the room. I'm done with the statement. As far as I'm concerned, I'm done investigating this case because I don't work with detectives that solicit lies. But today, the state came back fighting and exposed that Michelle Boutros is a little liar. She's called on audio tape wow. with Mark Moretti discussing how she did see Melly's mom trying to turn off the phone, but then on the stand, she says the exact opposite. I'm gonna read this full document. It's crazy. It's in the last half of this video. It's subscribe right now. Let's get right into this. So yeah, so much of this stream is gone. Apparently deleted the stream midway through the day and got rid of so much of the testimonies. In the search warrant, we talk about Jake King having been contacted by Oh, I guess he speeds it up too. That's crazy though. I'm gonna pause it real quick. Like, if he really got this footage, yo, I think he does. He always brings some facts. But if she really went on stand and lie like that, that's crazy. And on top of it, she's talking about, oh, I don't work with detectives that lie. <laughs> that's real hypocritical. And I don't know. Let's see. And our investigation came from text messages that we received from the Dagny family stating that there was communications. Um, when I spoke with this the hospital, has uh, like, like a sharper that, uh, curve. She had communicated with her son. Um, she did not know where he died. Like so. And we did later corroborate that we did realize, we did find out that they were communicating. Uh, Instagram, they communicated through Instagram. We had the actual messages of them communicating at that time. That was later corroborated by Rose. Now, in the affidavit, what information in that affidavit is your personal knowledge and what information is your personal knowledge? Specifically, which one are you referring to? I'm asking what in that affidavit is your personal knowledge. I got my kneaded eraser. I'm just... Tap away a little bit. This is our investigation also revealed. Our... What is your knowledge? Uh, I did see the text messages from the Bagley family. We do have them, they were blatant. We do have them, you have them as far as discovery. That's where we first uh, seen, uh, was made aware that there was communications that morning. 435, 15th Portland, Henry, enter the emergency room. And it goes on. Where did you get that information? The you know, officers on scene, the, the video. Um, we had the vehicle right there in the, uh, right in the ER entrance. That was that's, that portion was all relayed to me um, by the officer on scene. Recording studio uh, evidence was obtained from Detective Bertrand and Detective uh, Toyota. He just said Dontavius Withers, one of the guys that was in the separate vehicles from the studio, lied about his name at first and said his name was uh, William. That's funny as shit. The audio is so bad. It's, oh my God. The detective requesting a warrant for cell phone. 907, the cell site used by said cell phone. Mm -hmm. This is a cell phone that number. That curve is definitely this happened, also requires a warrant for sharper cell phone than that. What we got? This is 3B. I don't this need. This warrant is specific to the historical data. You said that the phone used that page, the cell site. How did you know? Common knowledge, John. Common knowledge, John. I have every cell site. Absolutely. It would be common to you, but you know that you would know that. Right. Are you asking to testify what everyone would know in the United States? That's not common knowledge, gang. I don't know about you, but I don't know. I don't know all the cell sites. You know all the cell sites? Can you go outside and find all the cell sites in your town right now? I don't know them. That's not common knowledge. Fire burns you. <laughs> That's common knowledge. 
If you asked me to testify what everyone would know in the United States, that was a good one. They don't like this detective talking about cell sites at all because they weren't able to ask him in deposition about any of that and it kind of blindsided them, but it's kind of their fault for not reading the affidavit years ago and then in their first deposition asking him. What is ATI? Oh, advanced timing information? That you're to? Advanced timing information is data that is collected by the cellular companies. Um, it's, it's the way that the network is able to communicate with the phone as well as is the way that they can uh, dial, you know, dial into the, uh, the validity of the phone and how it communicates with the tower. Uh, timing advance um, also provides us, law enforcement, with uh, historical location data. The, the review by state attorney knows what we're talking about. They're also uh, submitted to a judge. Uh, yes. These warrants don't go to a common person. So anyone that uh, deals with this or has been dealing with this knows what this information is. And it does not, there's no place in the affidavit that explain what ATR is. Well, it's, it's industry standards, sir. I, you know, I, I, can't, I can't testify to what a judge does or does not know. Well, these lawyers just point out that there's no explanation of what ATI is in the affidavit. There was some discussion uh, by counsel about her taking a sample of the phone and turning the phone off. Uh, turning the phone off essentially blocks the phone and re encrypts the data, correct? Correct. And there's a, these are the two prosecutors right here, by the way, these two on the left. There's a term known as for first unlock and after first unlock. And when a phone has been, had a passcode entered and has been previously unlocked, that's known as after first unlock, correct? AFU, yes sir. And AFU, uh, a lot more of the data will be retrievable once the device has been seized. Whereas if an individual has managed to power off their phone, the phone is encrypted and it is much more difficult to get into a phone. It's almost impossible. You may get some pictures and something that the core data, uh, you will not get. When you were in that room with Ms. King, she was attempting to turn off the phone. It was your position she was attempting to store it high data at that point. He said 100%. She was trying to turn off her phone and make it harder for us to get that data, dude. Hell nah. I would have broke that bitch's wrist if I had to. It's actually backed up because you testified when you went through some of her messages, you found messages in the phone saying, don't contact me, the police are on me, et cetera, et cetera. Correct. Now, counsel also brought up that you had learned that subsequent to this, uh, Ms. Boutros had explained to members of our office that she no longer wanted to work with you after what happened in that room on October 12th, correct? In fact, Ms. Boutros did continue to work with you afterwards, didn't she? Correct. I, it was hard to hear, but did he say that Ms. Boutros did work with him after? Yes. Ms. Boutros lied about working with Moretti? Yes, sir. The subpoena dated uh, 17th October. Are those subpoenas that you sent Ms. Boutros in regards to this case? Yes. And those were sent after what happened in that room on October 12th? Yes. Did she approve and return those subpoenas to you? Yes. Huh. What are those? Those are text messages between uh, Ms. Boutros and I on October 17th. And in short, what are those communications in regards to? Discussing the case. So wow. after this October 12th incident where she's alleged to have said she no longer wanted to work with you, she continued to work with you on this case. Correct. In fact, she reached out to you and asked about the phone and executing the phone dump and if you had gotten into the phone. Mm. Correct. Well, all of her credibility just went out the window. But I mean, hold on though. Just because she says she doesn't want to work with somebody doesn't mean she's going to like immediately be able to stop working with them. You know, I don't know. Just benefit of the doubt because that's that's unbiased facts. Like, that's real facts. Like, I'm sure everybody watching this, if anybody is watching this, I'm sure you work with somebody who you probably don't want to work with, but you still got to work with, right? Like, I know I, I got people like that. She acted like she never talked to him again on the stand like a month ago. Y'all remember that? Why would she cap about that? Knowing that they could just get text messages between them. So from your perspective, it appeared Ms. Boutros was still fully involved in this investigation after October 12th. Yes. Counsel also asked you that you, after October 12th, you had decided not to return the phone. Were you planning on sending the phone out to another agency? I was going to have the Secret Service uh, look at it uh, to get a uh, more depth into the metadata. Let me see some. His is, face. This line is too harsh. Phone, already, uh, wiped the data on it. Yes. Do you know if it's possible to recover white data on a phone? Yes, it is. Uh, this is an email that I sent to uh, Ms. Boutros. It basically, did the, I told her that I'm the cell, I will not be returning the cell phone. I'll be getting a second opinion from the Secret Service. I also said there was another $300,000 that was granted to her account, which puts up about $600,000 that we can't account for. I wonder if she's struggling to financially pay her simplest bills and then it goes back to where's all the money. Hold on, $600,000. What's he talking about $600,000? I missed $600,000 we can't account for. I don't know any information about this. What's the date of that email? The October 17th. So as late as October 17th, five days after you had seized the phone, you are still a conversation with Ms. Boutros about the nature of the investigation, where the investigation is proceeding, new evidence that you're discovering, and other information that would be relevant to her as the person reviewing the case. Correct. Yeah, she needs the information. 
Damn, I wonder what Melly thinking. The lady that came up there and basically made the lead detective look terrible. He is kind of sketchy. Let's be honest. That situation's still pretty sketchy about him taking her phone. But the lady that witnessed it all was in the room with him. Turns out to be a little bit of a liar. You're interviewed with this king. Uh, approximately how much or what percentage of that questioning involved the investigation into witness tampering in the park? The whole interview was, was geared you know, towards that. cough dude i have my audio up so loud so i can hear and that cough just absolutely f my ears each time <laughs> oh geez that's funny so you're sad. Da, 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 da. When you're talking about what evidence is on the phone, you put it under so. the homicide case number. Correct. Correct. Because I have actually never had the main case number for you. This can get charged with tampering. That's what judge is intending to say. What you're saying? He says, Miss King charged with witness tampering. So I think what he's hinting at here is that anything on her phone is like irrelevant to the homicide case. All right, we're going to go through my man Bryson Paul's tweets right here. So go follow this guy. He's a great reporter because obviously a lot of the stream got deleted today and he was real time tweeting out because he's a legend. So let's read some of these tweets so we can get a lot of the information that happened today since the stream is deleted. So here's Miss Boutros, the state attorney that basically snitched on the detective saying that he took the phone illegally. ASA Michelle Boutros appears very confident, very calm, and very detailed during the examination by Melly's defense. Wanted to be Melly's defense examination finds ASA Michelle Boutrous delivering a close identical testimony she gave days before the removal of former ASA Christine Bradley. Judge Murphy said, excuse me, I don't want you shaking your head, sir. Who is this about? I believe it was directed toward the prosecutor as the witness was testifying one of their own. Isn't it fucking crazy that Melly's team was able to get prosecutors upset with each other? For the record, three cases involving Detective Moretti where you were the assigned prosecutor. You don't remember working with him? Boutrous, I don't remember. Ooh. That's Cap. She's lying, dude. How do you not know that? God damn it. I'm upset this isn't on video. Christopher YNW Juvie Thomas Jr. would have turned 25. Damn. Rest in peace, Juvie, bro. That's crazy. The state. You said you would never work with Detective Moretti again, but did you? ASA Michelle Boutros. Yes, but the state simply yes or no. ASA Michelle Boutros. Yes. Oh no. That's just not a good look for what she said in her previous testimony. So this is what she said about Detective Moretti a month ago now. I don't say anything to Moretti. I leave the room. I'm done with the statement. As far as I'm concerned, I'm done investigating this case because I don't work with detectives that solicit lies. So she was that confident saying she doesn't work with detectives that solicit lies, but I mean, devil's advocate, devil's advocate, yo, giving her the benefit of the doubt. Not saying I believe her or him, but based on how she just said that, she could be saying, like, I don't work with people who lie. Like, I usually do not work with people who lie. That's not saying I'm done working with this guy. I'm never going to work with this guy again. It's more like saying I generally don't work with people who lie. You know what I mean? Like, that's like... Let me play it back. And then when she's saying, like, as far as I'm concerned, I'm done. Like, like she may have really felt that way in the moment. Like, all right, in that moment, yeah, now nah, I'm done with this. Get up, walk out. And then maybe her superior two hours later was like, uh, no. You want a, you want a job tomorrow? You better work with him. You know what I mean? Like, you never know, gang. Let me just play it back statement as far as i'm concerned i'm done investigating this case because i don't work with detectives that solicit lies so she was that confident saying she doesn't work with detectives that solicit lies but she still proceeded to work with him a little bit and she said she never worked with him ever but they have find to be melly's defense do you have a vendetta against detective moretti who tries to know melly's defense to judge murphy i don't think anyone in this court or anybody should trust the morality or credibility of detective moretti moretti talks about at crucial 365 suspicion via twitter investigation where questioned by melly defense if he did a thorough investigation so this is that tweet from this uh, guy that this. tweeted you want beef think is sweet we come aiming at the jeep at wine to be melly four days target practice wine to be melly diss and this was on the same day as the murders eight hours later after the murders it was already public information that it was a jeep involved in all of this so like this guy was clout chasing with a diss song about melly like this guy has nothing to do with this case million percent but this is a defense team seeing this suspicious tweet be like yo did y'all investigate this guy you didn't do a thorough investigation even though this guy's just a clout chasing like rapper there's nothing to 
the case whatsoever. The prosecution filed state supplemental discovery. It says USB contents previously delivered to defense counsel on September 27, 2023 on a USB drive, video surveillance video number one, showing Sergeant Hendricks arriving at the elevator, leaving elevators, as well as Adam Gorell uh -huh. arriving out the elevator, walking right. around consistent with his name of being lost and leaving via elevators. Video also shows Jamie Kane and her attorney walking away from the hallway of this conference room and staying in the hallway chatting. Angle portrays Miss King using her hands to speak and make calls. Video later shows Miss King and her attorney leaving with Miss King holding items in her hand. So they're hinting that her hand wasn't really that injured because she was able to talk with her hands and use a phone to call the state attorney's coming to fight, baby. Video angle depicts Miss King and her attorney showing up for the statement, entering the conference room. Hendrick enters at 11.27. He leaves at 11.34. Gorell finds the correct conference room and enters at 42. 38 seconds later, Deputy Gorell leaves. Video angle shows Miss King and her attorney leaving the conference room, showing no signs of injury. <laughs> They can be observed standing in the hall talking. Miss King observed using both her hands as well as using her hands to make calls from her attorney's phone. Miss King and her attorney re-enter the conference room. Oh, they went back in? I didn't know they went back in. I thought that was like the end and they just left. And they leave 11 minutes after that, utilizing her hand holding an item. All this was caught on an audio file too, apparently like inside the, the conference room. Miss King verbally and physically refusing to provide Moretti with her cell phone for over two minutes despite being served with a search warrant. Boutros informed Miss King she needed to hand her phone over, but she persisted in refusing, tempted to turn off the phone, which could have deleted the data. And Moretti grabbed the cell phone from her hand. Upon grabbing the phone, Miss King said, ouch. Showed no signs of pain or wrist or fingers on the video. Boutros can be heard telling Miss King it appeared she was trying to turn off her cell phone. No. Boutros on the stand said she couldn't tell if she was turning off her phone actually. But in real life, when it happened, Boutros said that she was turning off her cell phone, like she could see it. And both agreed uh. they saw the power off screen appear on Miss King's phone. Uh. <gasps> Oh, Boutros is a little liar. <laughs> Why on the stand did she say she couldn't see anything on the phone? Her credibility is out the fucking window because she gave two conflicting statements. All Sergeant right, Parker right. notes Boutros' sworn statement is inconsistent with the audio recording due to the fact that she told Parker she did not see Miss King attempt to turn off the phone. Gorell's sworn statement, sworn police report, refute the accusation that Moretti and Gorell to declare he was present during the execution of the search warrants. This is the deputy that you know, Moretti say he was there. I believe Moretti did say that. I, I believe he said for him to say he was in the room because he knows the search warrant, you know, laws and shit. So this is the judge right here, Judge Martin, basically saying that she can't get her phone back because it's subject of an investigation still. Holy shit, the Miss Boutros messed that up, dude. Uh. Well, if they call her now, she's just going to get destroyed by the prosecution. Uh -huh. Absolutely destroyed. That's All right, crazy, so here's bro. another supplemental discovery right here. Three subpoenas signed by Michelle Boutros for Moretti on 10-17-23. Bank of America records... Cash App Records, Western Union Records. Five days after the incident, she did all this for Moretti. She got all those subpoenas. So 10-12 was the day of the incident with Melly's mom. On 10-14, Boutros initiates contract with Moretti, asking if he had any luck getting into the phone and follows up asking if he can determine when the phone was activated. And then three days after that, Moretti initiates contact with her, asking if she has a second to speak. The day before, right here on 10-11, Boutros emails Moretti case on how an officer can make an arrest outside his jurisdiction with or without a warrant based on probable calls under the the citizens arrest theory. Boutros sends Moretti case law and affiance of search warrants for warrants executed outside their jurisdiction be being permissible. This is so fishy. Why was she sending him that? But then in her testimony, she said she had no idea he was going to serve this search warrant the next day. But she sent all that the day before. Mm. Boutros is a little liar, dude. Like straight up. Okay, if you got all that evidence, then hmm, you know, giving her the benefit of the doubt, kind of like going out the window now. Because yeah, you are right. Like, what y'all think? Like, maybe she was just playing this guy? Was she trying to, you know, protect herself or what? Like, up. Moretti emails Boutros a signed copy of search warrant to seize Miss King's phone and asks if she would mind printing the warrant for him as he would not have the option to get the office prior to the statement. He emails her subpoenas and provides an update on the case five days later. Boutros forwards the three subpoenas to her assistant to be prepared five days later. Boutros signs all three subpoenas approving them five days later. So yeah, she's fucked. This just destroyed Boutros's whole reliability that's, and credibility. I mean, I crazy. still think Moretti's a little liar with that situation saying he didn't say that to the officer. I think he did say that because he was paranoid the day before reading stuff about jurisdiction stuff that she sent to him. Like clearly it was in his head. Like, let me make sure this guy was in the room or tell this guy that he should say he was in the room. I still think Moretti did that, but she also just looks terrible a month ago on the stand. That's an update for this case right now, boys. If you're new on the channel, subscribe from Twitter, Instagram. Love you guys. Peace out. That is absolutely crazy, bro. Yo, this is so coincidental, too. I'm gonna get into this after because I just watched a video on this. But check me out, gang. What y'all think about this update with the Melly trial? 
Also, what y'all think about this drawing so far? I mean, it's only been like, I don't know, a couple minutes. I only started doing this braid. I ain't get much done. Um, you know, it really does take a while. Like, I take my time with this, you know? But, um, thank you for watching today's video. If you like my art, <laughs> you could hit the link down below. I got a link to my store. You could check out some of the products. I got merch on sale. That's pretty much you know just clothes with my art on it i got prints for sale or you could literally just follow me anywhere anywhere at all like it's the same at arraign tj all right gang i'm gonna see y'all in the next one and until then have a great day